The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pezzavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pezzavento. Okay, good morning, folks. Uh, by the way, it's looking good, feeling good, as Billy Ray Valentine would say from Trading Places. Uh, if you're ever up in Philadelphia, uh, if you go on South Broad Street, uh, I believe it's around 600 Broad, you'll see the uh, Dunn, or the, <laughs> the Duke and Duke offices. It's actually the Wells Fargo building. Uh, it was built in 1929. Uh, and if you go in and talk to the banker and be really nice to him, he'll take you up into the area where they actually film the uh, – the scene where he's uh, finding drugs from uh, Lewis Winthorpe III, but it's it's really an exciting place to go into. But it, when I went in it the first time, I recognized it, but I couldn't place it. And the lady at the cashier uh, told me, she said, well, this was the movie Trading Places, and then it all fell into place. And I talked to the manager, and it was um, it was really, uh, really, really quite good. So it was it was just a lot of fun. We had a lot of things happen yesterday. Uh, the chart that I've posted into uh, the Tiger Den today is um, the New York Stock Exchange Index, which we look at uh, very, very closely. Uh, and as you notice, it hit the 61% retracement, uh, just spot on on Tuesday. Uh, that was the ABCD down. Uh, we had, remember, we were looking at that possible key date around the 9th or 10th, which we certainly had a huge rally. Now, I, I just think this is nothing more than a, a bear market rally. You know, bull markets do not uh, take off like that and are up, uh, you know, almost 300 points with advanced declines 5 to 1. They go slowly so that everybody can buy it. That's short covering what I what we saw yesterday, in my opinion. But we'll have to, you know, see how far this rally is uh, is going to to extend. So that's one of the things that uh, is on the agenda of these next few days. We're up against some pretty stiff uh, Fibonacci resistance up here at the 2110 level in the S&P futures. So we uh, should take a, a quick look on that. Now, there's uh, we also had a crop report yesterday. And um, I posted the chart in for wheat. And as you can see, we had talked about this ABCD formation that we were watching wheat up at 537. Uh, wheat has broken over 35 cents a bushel in the past uh, 10 hours. Um, that basically completed that pattern. And we would be expecting some support to come in probably around the 490 to 470 per bushel level uh, in the wheat. We also had a negative bean report, but beans didn't fall nearly as much. And we also had a negative corn report, and it's also down a little bit. Beans, you want to watch November beans uh, around the 906 level. That's the 61% retracement coming off that bottom at 896. We rallied uh, 36 cents. Now that pullback would take you down to 906. I'd be looking to be a buyer there. Uh, we've already talked about that long-term pattern in beans. It's uh, in play. So um, we'll uh, keep an eye on that really, really closely. Um, the, there's, a, there's, a, there's two markets that I think are, that deserve our, our really strong attention. One is the, is the silver market, folks. It has, just, it has given up the ghost. There's just no question about it. There is uh, nothing you can say uh, good about silver from these levels is because we have broken down so substantially uh, below the 590 um, level. We got down to 573, and then when the report came back, we rallied up to 595, which was the 786 retracement of the of range yesterday, and now it's selling off again. So uh, silver just looks, uh, you know, in, in, in really bad. That's basically uh, all you can say about it. It's just nothing more than uh, – uh, it just wouldn't rally. When we, we mentioned this yesterday, you know, when gold was going up and making the the larger ABCD pattern, we were certainly, uh, you know, looking at something that, that looked like it wanted to be, uh, you know, um, that it wanted to get ready to go to the downside. That's what it looks like. Now, whether that's going to be the case or not, let me post that chart in the gold because we were, uh, we were watching that. Let me have to do one little... Uh, one little piece of work here. There we go. Here, in fact, the, the gold rallied right back to the uh, 786. Retra excuse me, 61% retracement on the day day's range at 11, uh, 1185. But we had so many ABCD patterns up there that we were uh, talking about yesterday 
that that tells us that we're probably getting ready for uh, you know the market to have a sell-off and you know we almost made a 61 percent retracement already this morning so that tells us that uh, we're probably in a short-term or downtrend now uh, in the gold. The only way that gold can get bullish now is to get it back above the 1190 uh, per barrel level. I bet, try, let's try that. Eleven dollars and ninety, eleven hundred and ninety dollars per ounce level. If we get above that, then we'd be looking at uh, you know 1210 or something in the gold. But right now, uh, we should be in a corrective mode here for a few days. We basically bottomed on the fifth. We rallied up into the 10th, and that would normally mean a three-day correction. And there should be strong support in gold down around $1,171 uh, per ounce level. The, uh, the the big problem is the silver market. Let me put this up here. And they were talking about the funeral. They held the funeral last night while we were um, off the air. But uh, the silver has really broken badly here, folks. Uh, it's going to take us nothing short of a miracle to uh, turn this market around, but we'll uh, we'll pull this up and show you how how we're really breaking down uh, quite a bit here. You'll uh, you'll see here uh, that we broke down so so far below the uh, the the lows that we were set had to hold, which was the right where we're trading now at 15.94. We just came back into that zone, but and that was mainly because of the the report that came out. So uh, this, the $64 question is, is, you know, how much lower is silver going to go? And once we broke that support, there's really not much there to uh, help us. Now, the low in the day in silver was down around, you know, 1578. Uh, we rallied up to, uh, to 1602. We rallied, uh, to, you know, 23 cents, uh, which was the retracement off of the previous day's high. Uh, that took us right at the 61% retracement. So if we can get silver to close above, you know, 16, 10 or so, then the patient might come back from the dead. But right now, this thing looks uh, looks pretty sick. That's uh, the bottom line from what uh, I'm looking at from that perspective. So uh, keep an eye on that. Now, I want to switch over here. Um, I was going to have Rich Anderson on today, but unfortunately, uh, Rich is uh, tied up today, mainly because we had a big crop report yesterday, and he's got a lot of business to do uh, this morning, so he's not really able to come in and take a look at it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to walk you through the crude complex the way I see it. And uh, because I think we're making a major top here uh, in the crude oil and, and also in heating oil and also uh, in uh, the uh, gasoline market. So the first one I'm going to start out with is to, um, I'm going to cover the bond market in just a second here. And uh, we have had a huge reversal here in the bonds. Let, let me do the let me do the crude oil complex first, and then when we come back from the break, uh, I will do the uh, I'll do the bond market. That's the frustrating one for me today because I I had an order to buy the bonds at the 1.618 retracement, which was just three or four ticks lower than yesterday's low, and uh, it missed. And boy, it took off. It's up two thousand dollars from where I wanted to buy it. So. I have my attorney uh, checking on that, but unfortunately, he's going to be out of town for a few weeks, and I probably don't have much of a case. This first chart that I brought up here is the heating oil, and as you can see, we're making a 61% retracement in heating oil going back to um, the May 15th. Now, we've made new highs in the gasoline market, okay, but we have not made new highs in the um, Crude oil, nor uh, crude oil or heating oil. Both of those are are divergence, and I think that we talked about this yesterday. I want to bring it up to show you because these are the types of things that uh, scare you. This is like what happened with the wheat when you have those A B C D patterns coming in, you know, right at the um, uh, new highs or new lows. That usually means it's going to be uh, a double top type formation. So, give me a second here to put up the the four hour chart here uh, on the crude, and you'll see. Oh, I already took it off the air. Hold on just a second. You'll be able to see it here anyway. You'll be able to see this A, B, C, D pattern without any trouble at all. And uh, that's the one that I want to be watching. Okay, let me uh, let me put this up here. All right. Yeah, let me take me a second here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there's what, what I want to show you. Okay, that's what's happened in the crude oil. We went up yesterday. Uh, this thing hit the spot on high at uh, 61.86 was supposed to be the high. It got to 61.80. Uh, we then completed a small ABCD pattern this morning, but we cannot take out those highs at 62.40 as of yet. 
this is the second part uh, of the puzzle uh, that we're looking at in the crude oil uh, uh, complex. Now, the third part, of course, is the strongest part, and that's the gasoline. That's been the one. That, and gasoline, folks, if you if you're of the faint of heart, you don't want to trade gasoline because its thing is gasoline. I mean, it literally will burn a hole right through your your pockets if you're not uh, if you're not careful. But it follows the number sequences really nicely. Uh, yesterday's high was um, right at right very very close to the exact 1.27 retracement, uh, and it is also the uh, longer term 1.414 retracement. So we made new highs in the gasoline uh, market, but we've got divergence now between the crude oil and also, uh, you know, the heating oil. So if you're going to sell one, sell the heating oil. That's the weakest. The old market adage is you sell the weakest and you buy the strongest. And um, that's old W.D. Gann, or no, it's uh, Jesse Livermore from Reminiscences of Stop Operators. Said, don't be afraid of high prices. They're there for a reason, and don't be afraid of low prices. They're there for a reason. So we have high prices now, and we're looking for a place to uh, get short. And crude oil, if we get below 6050, uh, that would be my trigger to think that this is probably getting ready, uh, you know, to go down. But uh, we're still a little ways from that, so not much you can, uh, not much you can do right here. But this is something that's on the watch list. Um, we've got this divergence going. And, and folks, remember, when this thing was making a bottom back in March, we had the same type of divergence, whereas gasoline was much, much stronger. Let's just go back and show you what was happening here. Now, when crude oil, I'm going to put this up here again so we can see the um, uh, gasoline. Now, remember, now, when we were making lows back in um, February, the gasoline futures were already starting to move up. They had uh, already had a higher bottom than we had in crude oil, and that was the one that took off the fastest and has gone the farthest. So we should be at the area now where this should be ending, and you want to be, you know, keep an eye on that. Whether you have oil stocks or whatever, I don't know what it would be, but you know, keep sort of a uh, an indication that. Uh, we could be, and I could be totally wrong. If we go much above, um, you know, two dollars and eighteen cents a gallon in this gasoline, I'll certainly be wrong, and that means that crude oil would have to break out above sixty-two dollars per barrel, and then I would say, yep, I guess it could go a lot higher. But right now, we're starting to see, you know, the very first signs uh, of divergence. Um, that's the main thing. We have a question uh, about the silver, and the reason why. We, we talked about this yesterday. Is silver just could not rally. I mean, yeah, silver had a 15-cent rally when gold rallied $34. I mean, this is that's not right. Silver should have been up, you know, at least 60 cents because they go hand in hand. And it was only running about 25% of the volatility of what gold was doing, which was telling you that silver was under a great deal of pressure. And then we see that pressure last night, you know, once we broke below the 11 uh, the $14 barrel, then that's it. Okay, we'll be right back after these few words. to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side new to technical analysis this is the place to start and experienced traders take advantage of the trend like never before experience the power of the roads momentum indicator each day available to subscribers of my newsletter service mastering probability i guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend mastering probability available on the home page of tfnn.com and folks live with passion Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. 
Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and I've posted into the uh, Tiger TV the chart for the uh, Treasury bonds. Uh, and as you can see, uh, we had a really wonderful pattern coming in at the uh, 147.10 level. And um, believe me, they left the bus station without me today because we only got to 147.16, and it's rallied $2,000 a contract. So missed the boat on that one. Uh, the next one, and and there was a lot of reasons to be um, to be long the bonds down in this area. And if we take a look at the note market, which is the uh, much larger market. Uh, doesn't trade quite as volatile as the bonds, but it's about four times the size of the bond market. And uh, you'll notice that it hit the exact 786 retracement of the last swing low going back to April of 2014. So we, we're going to get a pretty good uh, short covering rally here uh, in bonds and notes. Um, it could be uh, probably five or six points at minimum in bonds, I believe, and about four points uh, in the notes. But interest rates are going higher. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. The market has already, you know, told us this. But right now we have a market that is incredibly oversold uh, and has reached all the profit objectives, uh, shorter term ones, of course, that we've seen uh, in quite some time. So this is what we're watching here in the bonds today. Um, unfortunately, it took off without us, but uh, at least I was on the right side of the, the bus station to catch the bus, but it left without me. Now... We also had a really interesting pattern today uh, in the uh, in the euro, 
And uh, I think I'd like to uh, show you that. And I also wanted to do the one uh, uh, on the uh, on the British pound also because this Euro one, they uh, the bus station was kind enough to uh, wait for us to get on because we had a beautiful Gartley pattern coming in uh, on the Euro down about that 11, uh, one, oh, excuse me, 111.80 uh, area. Uh, we hit 111.79, and we rallied um, well over $1,000 in just a matter of uh, a few minutes. And so that pattern is certainly uh, certainly complete uh, from this level. When we get back from the break, uh, I'm going to uh, go over the British pound because that's the currency that I think you should be looking at to go short. It's the weaker of the uh, currencies versus the U.S. dollar, and uh, I think that's the one that really uh, should uh, – gain our attention. In fact, what, what we'll do here is let's try to do it right now. We should have time, you know, to get into this and then we'll uh, see where we are. Hold on one second and we'll get this. Uh, there we go. Get the British pound up on a daily basis because this is the one that had all the really strong patterns uh, up here. And uh, you'll see uh, we focused on this, uh, uh, well, two weeks ago when we were uh, looking at the British pound and uh, just take me one second and then I'll be ready. There we go. Folks, when you see uh, five ratios coming together like we had back on uh, May 19th, uh, that's a, a really key thing to, uh, to watch. You had a 50% retracement. Uh, these are these going back a long time because these are all dailies. And we had a 50% retracement, a 61% retracement, a 38.2 retracement, a 1.27 expansion, and a 1.618 expansion. There were five ratios coming together at the same time, which was telling you that something was really important going to happen with the pound. And it went from 158 all the way down to 152. It dropped 600 pips in 10 days. And now what we're doing... As you can see from the chart, is we are uh, rallying back, making a 61% uh, retracement. So that hasn't hit yet. That comes in at 155.65, and we're trading uh, about 60 pips, uh, well, about 70 pips below that. So watch for the pound to get up to that area, and that would be the spot where you want to be looking to go short. You'd have to risk about 100 pips, which is around $600 in the pound. But the profit potential on this is better than um, 600 pips. So you're, you have a 10 to 1 risk-reward ratio on the pound versus the dollar. And the pound's the weaker of the, of the currencies that we're, that we're watching. So uh, these markets and the currencies are you know, really wonderful to trade. But I want to show you one that what can happen when a news announcement hits, like what happened with the Kiwi, the, um, the uh, New Zealand dollar uh, last night. Let me just put this up so uh, you can see the game. Gap. And uh, it was really um, quite amazing what happened with it. You'll see it in just a second. What they decided to do was to raise interest rates. And you'll see, excuse me, they lowered interest rates. And uh, you can see the market just totally uh, dropped. Now, that drop was equivalent to about $2,000. Now, you wouldn't have been able to get out of it until, you know, if you, in fact, our buy on this uh, last week was at 7040, and then we, we made two units out of it, it went all the way up to 72, which was the, you know, the, the $2,000 max. So we're going to take a break here. When we get back, we're going to talk uh, a little bit uh, about the stock market. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom 
optimization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're like me, you see the world's emerging nations as a very real opportunity, as these countries and their economies are developing right before our eyes. And you can rest assured that Everbank has spotted this opportunity too. In fact, they have just released the second running of their five-year Market Safe Futures Economy CD. This is a CD that could really deliver, but you only have until June 11th to take advantage. Consider the facts. If the future economy's currencies beat the U.S. dollar over the CD term, you'll get all of the upside at maturity. And should they lose, no worries. There's zero downside risk here, as you get back 100% of your deposited principal. Don't miss out. The June 11th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is an equal housing lender and member FDIC. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile traders market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesavento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technicians Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up-to-the-second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I posted into uh, Tiger TV the... Um, the profit objective on what that British pound trade uh, could be working towards, and that is the 149 level. So that's uh, 600 um, pips to the downside. So that's a uh, you know pretty significant move. Uh, we're having a lot of buying hitting the market on the open this morning. We've uh, taken out the previous day's highs. Uh, I think those are open orders. There are uh, opening indication orders, you know, to get the market higher. Uh, whether how it ends today is going to be interesting because we're in the third day of a rally. We bottomed on Tuesday. This is Wednesday, Thursday. So uh, if the market is bearish, uh, this is about the extent of the time how much it's going to rally uh, from the upside uh, remains to be seen we're up near some 786 numbers uh, in the s p up here around 2113 2114 so uh, that's the possibility that the market could uh, run into you know a tad bit of trouble up in this area i believe this is uh, nothing more than a, a short covering rally that we're seeing but if we make new highs then uh, i'm certainly going to be uh, certainly going to be wrong we certainly hit the bottom right on the bottom with that uh, uh, 61 percent retracement uh, in the uh, s the, the, the 
New York Stock Exchange Index. Uh, the S&P also made that number. The um, da the uh, DAX, excuse me, the Nasdaq could uh, barely make a 382 retracement of the whole move. So that was telling you that it was, uh, you know, very very oversold. And we came in during that time when we're supposed to be looking at uh, a pretty good cycle date, which was Bradley date, along with the uh, Mercury going uh, direct. The only other date we have coming in is we've got the um, the uh, new moon coming in here uh, in a few days. I believe that comes in around the 17th. So, uh, you know, maybe we go straight up into the 17th. You know, who knows? We'll just have to, you know, to wait and see what's going to happen. We're getting a lot of buying right now with the Dow up about uh, 60 points. The S&P's up five. The Nasdaq's up around 17. So there's more buying coming into the market uh, uh, again, much like there was yesterday. Yesterday, the key was once above, once we went above the 382 retracement in the futures, uh, S&P futures at uh, 2091. Uh, Once we took that out, uh, you know, there was really nothing else up there. And of course, it just exploded to the upside where we had five to one uh, advancing, advancing uh, volume versus declining volume. So these are the things that, uh, you know, really make you uh, uh, really skeptical of uh, this being a a uh, new leg of a bull market because bull markets start very slowly. They allow you to buy and let the market work higher. They just don't explode and, you know, raise the bids on everything, and that's what's happening. The volume yesterday was not much, but this market can go up on little volume. It can go up on big volume. Uh, the advanced decline line turned dramatically. Of course, we had a big up day with five to one breadth. In other words, for every uh, one stock down, there were five stocks up yesterday, which is uh, another outlier type event. So, um, that's what we think, and we're, we're continuing on that this morning. Whether it goes up the whole day or not, you know, uh, remains to be seen. But right now, we're right near the highs, and it looks like we are going to uh, probably go a little bit higher uh, as we uh, as we speak here. Okay, now the question that we have is on uh, price line, and if you'll give me a second here, I will uh, bring the price of. Um, Oh, I posted the chart of the euro in there. You'll see how it made the 61% uh, retracement. I should put that in again. We rallied uh, well over 100 pips, which was $1,200. And now we're backing off. We're almost uh, a 78% retracement of the early morning high. So um, this thing gets much below the low of the day at 111.80. Uh, you're going to see the euro continue down another 100 pips would be uh, what what I would uh, think it was going to do. So we'll just have to uh, let's let's see what's going on. The main the main focus today was going to be the bonds. They've already taken off. Uh, the next thing I'm watching is the crude oil complex. I'm looking for a, a place to get short crude oil, and um, we will uh, you know. Well, we basically, if it gets below 60.50, you know, I would look to be a seller of the crude oil, but I want to sell it before that because I'd rather sell on strength than on weakness. And uh, so I haven't seen any of that happen yet because the oil is still holding its own. We're trading at 60.78 right now, and uh, not too much is uh, too much is going on uh, at that point. Okay, now the question is on the price line. If you give me a second here, we'll put it up here. This has been a weaker than market stock. Of course, it'll have probably some type of a uh, earnings come out here pretty soon. But we've been in a downtrend in this. We uh, usually have our friend uh, La Paz Charlie from uh, La Paz, Mexico call in. But uh, unfortunately, he's not able today. So we're going to someone else ask about it. And as you can see, give me a second. There we go. That didn't work. Hold on. You can see that we are still in a downtrend in price line. We've had lower highs ever since January. Uh, our price objective on this is still at 1107. That's down about $73 per share from where we are right now. And um, you know, just be patient. I think if you want to buy this stock, that'd be the place to do it. That's uh, at uh, right around $1100, 1096 per share. That'll be a 61% retracement of this whole move up. So that's uh, another one that we want to uh, to be keeping an eye on. I wanted to, to take a minute here to talk about the VIX because uh, there is absolutely no fear in this market at all. I mean, why should there be when stocks can jump, you know, like they did uh, yesterday? And uh, the VIX just absolutely can't get out of its own way. Uh, we had a um, 
a little bit of a bounce that went up to the 786 on the uh, on the uh, VIX, and then it's broken down, and uh, we're now we're down into that gap area, which should be an area of some support in the VIX, but we'll have to wait and see. We have very little volatility in the VIX, folks, considering, you know, the Dow moves triple digits. You know, you'd think that the VIX would move more. But in fact, it's not doing that. And that just tells us that there's absolutely no fear out there. And it's a coming. It's just not here yet. The train has not arrived, but it will come. Um, these markets are, you know, very, very volatile. Uh, sometimes we run into pockets of illiquidity here. So you've got to be very, very, uh, very, very careful at all times, of course. You know, that's the main thing that you want to be doing is to be really careful with this. So... Uh, I still think that we have a long way to go down in stocks. I'm very bearish. Uh, I was expecting this rally yesterday, but I was not expecting it to be up almost 300 Dow points, which we've gone from the low to the high. We've actually rallied 300 Dow points uh, as of uh, early this morning. Uh, and that in itself is a, is a very big, uh, very big number. Now, the question is, is what happens if we go below the low that we made on June 19th? Uh, that is going to be so bearish that you just uh, you don't even want to think about that. And then if you look at the New York Stock Exchange Index chart, like I do each day, that's the real stock market. And we have three lower highs now, and the, the third one being this morning. And we have that 135 pattern that Bill and uh, Roy Longstreet have used, and it's a very powerful pattern because you're selling lower tops and that's uh, what we should be looking at when we're watching this now the stocks have only been open 18 minutes so this is the first part of the buying that occurs is just follow through buying from yesterday and it, whether it continues on or not that remains to be seen because if we reverse and I'm not saying we're going to but if we do you know then you're, you're looking at something that could be really sinister so um, usually the rallies last somewhere around three to five days this is the third day Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So if this is going to be the case, then we will see, uh, you know, how this thing will uh, unfold. But I don't think we're going to see new highs uh, in the NASDAQ or the S&P 500, and especially the New York Stock Exchange Index, which is the biggest of all the, uh, all the things that we're, we're watching. The key was that hitting that New York Stock Exchange Index, hitting that exact 61% retracement uh, yesterday uh, with that ABCD pattern. Uh, remember, we were looking at that Mercury uh, Direct, a uh, Mercury retrograde cycle that Norm Winsky pointed out to us, and that uh, Mercury was direct yesterday. And we also had, uh, at the same time, we had um, uh, Neptune uh, going retrograde. And as a matter, since we're on that subject, um, our good friend um, Steve Rhodes here at TFNN sent me some interesting interesting information on this and I wanted to uh, share that with you here just give me a second because what I did was I wanted to go back and see uh, how often this happened in history where we had planets that came in at the same time in other words both of them coming into retrograde or direct because it's a very very uh, very very rare event now the chart that I've posted in here to Tiger TV shows you these little uh, the little red circle or the white circle with the red uh, outline that basically shows the times when you had two planets that were either retrograde or direct motion within one day uh, in the past uh, eight years we've only had four instances and as you can see three of those four were spot on at major uh, tops in the market, three of three of the four, and these this was within uh, just a few days, folks. So these are, this is a weekly chart. So these this is uh, pretty accurate. Now in 2010, when the market was running up, we did have a situation where we had two planets in retrograde or direct, and nothing happened. So I mean, you can't really say from much from this chart because it's only a sample size of four, and you really need a minimum of a hundred samples in order to be statistically accurate. Well, in order to get a hundred samples, I'd have to go back into the early 1800s, and I don't have data going back that far, because we didn't get good data on stocks to begin with until 10 years after the Civil War, which was around 1875, when the New York Times started to put in stock price charts uh, into the uh, into the paper. 
But now we've got all kinds of information. But this is a, a rare event that happened yesterday with the two planets, Mercury going direct, Neptune going retrograde. And remember what Norm Winsky talked about was, and I'm, I use him as a reference because he's a very consummate uh, astrologer. He knows what he's talking about, that Neptune is the ruler of oil. And here what we're doing is we're looking for a potential uh, turning point in oil. And so that's what we want to be looking at. Folks, when oil was $42 a barrel, you couldn't find anybody on this planet that thought it was going to go higher. Now it's at $60 a barrel, and everybody thinks it's going to go higher. I don't know when they're going to get the message about this, but it's not coming through today. So we'll see. We got divergence in this oil market. You know, heating oil is lagging badly. Uh, crude oil can't make new highs. And the only one that's keeping uh, the ship afloat is the gasoline. So I think we're we're getting very, very close to a potential uh, turn down here in this crude oil. Whether it's going to go back to $40 a barrel or not, I don't know. But I think it's going to have a, a really rough time up here at this $61 to $62 per barrel. That's the way it looks like uh, from my perspective. Okay. Um, one other question that someone had was about uh, IBM. If you give me a second here, I'll put that up here, and we will take a look at it. Uh, I'm going to have um, Bill Meridian back on next week. Oh, that's not IBM. That's, uh, that's the biotech. Hold on a second. There we go. But, you know, we've had a pretty big top here in IBM here over the past uh, uh, few months here. Uh, this thing has been in a really strong downtrend for quite some time, and we want to be looking at the thing, so we'll see. Okay, there we go. You can see IBM has been in a downtrend since 2013. Um, we hit a 61% uh, retracement of the March lows yesterday, right on the money. And uh, let's just bring this up so you folks can see the power of, of some of these uh, Fibonacci numbers that we're watching. Give me one second here. And we will put it in here. There we go. And we'll pull this up. And uh, so we've had a pretty good rally, which is continuing uh, today. But yesterday's low in the uh, IBM was exactly 61%. At that 160280 uh, level uh, was exactly 61% of our low from back on March, uh, March the 13th. So we have a... You know, still a pretty strong rally going on uh, in IBM uh, from that level. I have another question uh, about the uh, possibility of uh, of a top in uh, the uh, oil market. Uh, how do I know if I'm wrong? Well, if if I'm wrong, you're going to see oil go above $62 uh, a barrel, and you're going to start to see heating oil start to uh, increase, and uh, you know maybe uh, even exceed the 61% retracement, and you'll see gasoline futures, you know, explode to the upside. The high so far in gasoline is 214 a gallon. If we get it to 215 to 216 a gallon, that would most probably tell us that, yes, we are going to go higher, and that we're not going to be looking at a potential reversal uh, in oil. So that's the, that's the bottom line of, you know, what we're watching uh, at this particular point uh, during, the, uh, during the time. Okay, we still got the market's been open about uh, 20, uh, well, not quite, about 18 minutes, and we still got the Dow up about 60 points, uh, the S&P's up uh, uh, about 8, and the NASDAQ is up around 12. So the market's still, uh, you know, absorbing this early morning buying, and, and most, of the, most of the transactions for the, uh, the stock market happened in that first hour. Uh, that that's usually when the opening orders come, and in the last hour they can be pretty, uh, pretty substantial also. But right now we're still in that opening zone here, and uh, that's the the key. We're uh, right near the well, the seven eight six, I believe, and the S and P comes in around uh, two twenty one fourteen, I believe. The old high was uh, uh, twenty one thirty six. I don't think that's uh, a possibility, but I I can be wrong, and we'll. We'll find out if I am, but that's what we're watching uh, at least, uh, you know, early this morning here uh, with uh, with the stocks. Uh, and we're still quite strong, as I mentioned before. Uh, gold is weakening up a little bit. Uh, we did rally back uh, to the 61% retracement up at 1185, and now we're starting to back off. We're going to take a little break here, and then we'll wind up the show in just a few minutes. Yay!
take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and I've posted into uh, Tiger TV the uh, stock chart of the New York Stock Exchange Index. Uh, this is going back uh, well over a month, goes back into March. And as you can see, the low that we made here yesterday, uh, excuse me, on uh, Tuesday, uh, came in exactly at the 61% retracement, I mean, to the exact tick. And now what we're doing is we're having a really strong rally. You can see the ABCD formation that was there. Uh, and now we're uh, rallying quite a bit. Now, this index takes a long time to get moving because they open it in segments. And uh, it's not a it's a it's a cash index of what's really happening with all the stocks. They don't trade this 
uh, future, you know, in the futures market. We used to many years ago, but it was called the knife at that time. But uh, it just didn't have the popularity of the S and P, the Dow, and the Nasdaq. So the futures died a slow death. And uh, but the index is very important because this is how they measure the mutual funds, uh, per for, per, not not portfolio, but the values of what's what's in there is based on how these uh, this index come out. It's a the several thousand of the most uh, a volatile, not most volatile, but the most highly capitalized stocks in the world. There's foreign stocks in there. There's about 2,300, I believe, but this is the real index. So what we're seeing now is we're seeing it rally back about 50% from the highs we made back on the 19th. You know, we're already at the, beyond the 786 level in the NASDAQ, and we're already uh, right at the 786 level in the S&P. So they're, you know, moving along a lot faster. Now, remember, when you're looking at the S&P and the the Dow and the NASDAQ, you're looking at 531 stocks. That's all you're looking at. And in the NASDAQ, four of those stocks are 13% of the whole value. You've got Amazon, you've got Apple, and you've got, uh, what are the other two? I can Google. And uh, there's one other one. There's five stocks that's called the, the five horsemen of the apocalypse. It's Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Apple, and one other one of the real expensive ones. I'll I'll think of it in just a minute, and uh, maybe I won't. But those those stocks are the ones that really move the market. And uh, when you've got an index that's 13% weighted on five stocks, you know you really got it. So listen, that's it for today. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.